everyone and welcome to V-Kids. It's great to have you all join with us again this Sunday. How are you doing Hamilton? Are you good? Great. And Hamilton, have you got a joke for us today? You have. And who sent this one in? So this one's been sent in by Anna. Thank you, Anna. And what's the joke, Hamilton? What did Mr. Window say? What did Mr. Window say? Can you have a think at home? What might Mr. Window have said? What did he say, Hamilton? all clear amazing thank you hamilton for that one and thank you anna for sending that in and don't forget you can send your jokes into us at vkids at vintagechurchla.com and we've got so much fun things for you this morning but we're going to start off by heading over to granny page turner who's going to tell us a little bit about the story today so over to you granny page turner oh hello everyone who've we got there you're all there, hello! It's Granny Page Turner here. I just thought we could go over what happened at the story last week. Do you remember? It was when Jesus healed the lady and healed Jairus' daughter, didn't he? Now then, if I can just find my Bible, I can tell you about the story. Can you see it? Where, oh, here it is, under my cup of tea again, silly me. So if you've got your Jesus Storybook Bible, today's story is on page 222, all the twos, page 222, and it's called How to Pray. So see if you can find it in your Bible and keep watching the screen because we're going to hear the story now. How to Pray. In those days, there were some extra super holy people at least that's what they thought, and they were called Pharisees. Every day they would stand out there in the middle of the street and pray out loud in big, extra super holy voices. They really weren't praying so much as just showing off. They used a lot of special words that were so clever no one understood what they meant. People walking by would stop and stare, which might sound rude, except that's exactly what the extra super holy people wanted. They wanted everyone to say, Oh, look at them, they're so holy. God must love those people best. Now, you and I both know they were wrong. God doesn't just love holy people. But the people walking by weren't so sure. Perhaps you did have to be really clever or good or important for God to love you. Perhaps you had to know lots of difficult, clever words to speak to God. So one day... Jesus taught people how to pray. He said, when you pray, don't pray like those extra super holy people. They think if they say lots of words, God will hear them. But it's not because you're so clever or good or so important that God will listen to you. God listens to you because he loves you. Did you know that God is always listening to you? Did you know that God can hear the quietest whisper deep inside your heart? even before you've started to say it, because God knows exactly what you need even before you ask him, Jesus told them. You see, God just can't wait to give you all that you need, so you don't need to use long words or special words. You don't have to use a special voice. You just have to talk. So when you pray, pray in your normal voice, just like when you're talking to someone you love very much, like this. Hello, Daddy. We want to know you and be close to you. Please show us how. Make everything in the world right again and in our hearts too. Do what is best just like you do in heaven. And please do it down here too. Please give us everything we need today and forgive us for doing wrong, for hurting you. Forgive us just as we forgive other people when they hurt us. Rescue us. We need you. We don't want to keep running away and hiding from you. Keep us safe from our enemies. You're strong, God. You can do whatever you want. You are in charge. 
now and forever and for always. We think you're great. Amen. Yes, we do. You see, Jesus was showing people that God would always love them with a never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love. So they didn't need to hide anymore or be afraid or ashamed. They could stop running away from God. They could run to him instead, as a little child runs into her daddy's arms. Wow, Hamilton, what a great story that was about how Jesus taught us to pray. And now I think that we've got Mademoiselle Patisserie Le Croissant, who's over in the kitchen, to tell us a little bit more about that story. And I think she's going to do a bit of cooking as well. So over to you, Mademoiselle Patisserie Le Croissant. Bonjour, mon petit bois. It is I, Mademoiselle Patisserie Le Croissant. It's so nice to be here with you today. Now, what an amazing story about how we must pray now. Do you know what this is? Yes, this is a cookbook. Not that I need a cookbook. I'm a professional chef for over 50 years, as you know. Now, the cookbook gives me the instructions, the directions of how to make the perfect dish. No? We, oui, yes, the perfect dish. Now, do you know what this is? Yes, this is the Bible. The Bible is also like an instruction book. It gives us directions of how to live and how to pray. And the Lord's Prayer, sometimes if we think we can't think what to pray or need some topics to pray, we can use the Lord's Prayer a little bit like a recipe. Now, I, because I'm a professional chef, I now am going to make a recipe. And because my name, Mademoiselle Patisserie Le Croissant, can you guess what I will make? Yes, I'm going to make Le Croissant this morning. Okay, so here's what you would need. You need the flour. So I have the bowl here, putting the flour, and voila, lots of flour, there we go. And then the milk. Now I borrow this from Professor Bonkers. Okay, so we put the milk in. There we go. All right, and then we must, of course, have the eggs. So one, two, three, quattro, neuf. Okay, and then we must give it the mix. So mix up nice to mix a nice le croissant pastry. All right, so then we mix till it's nice and thick. You see, nice and thick. Okay. And then we must knead the pastry. So do you know what that is? So we must get our hands, knead the pastry like so. Okay. So when it's all nice and mixed in together, we put on the baking tray. And two, three, four, seven, etc. Now there you see. Already for in the oven. So then we go in the oven, like so. And then we leave for 20, 30 minutes, okay? And then it comes out like this. Et voila, the perfect croissant you can share with your friends and family. Okay, okay, mon petit pois. I hope you try this at home, but maybe don't put so many eggshells in as me. You have to be very professional to use the shells. Okay, see you next time. Au revoir. Wow, didn't those croissants look delicious? And I loved what she said about how, you know, we can talk to God anytime and he does love to talk back to us. Because you know, sometimes it would be a bit boring if they were talking to someone and they didn't say anything back. And sometimes we can just ask God by his Holy Spirit to speak to us. And I wonder if after V Kids is over this morning, you want to grab some paper and some colored pens and you can just say, Holy Spirit, come. And you could ask God questions. Maybe you could ask him, God, how do you see me? What do you think of me? And sometimes God's Holy Spirit might put pictures or words into your mind and you could just write those down or draw the picture and then you know that God is speaking to you. And I sometimes find that if I just hold my hands out in front of me and just close my eyes and say, Holy Spirit, come. And then you can see that God is speaking to you as well. So maybe give that a go after V Kids this morning. But now we're going to go straight over to our memory verse. And Hamilton's going to tell us a verse today about praying and listening to God. So over to you, Hamilton. Hello, V 
friends, it's memory verse time. And today the verse comes from Jeremiah 33, verse 3. And it says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great things you do not know. It's like Miss Fiona just said, God loves it when we chat to him and he just loves to chat back to us. So have fun learning this verse. Until next week, bye. Hamilton, it is time for our worship, isn't it? But what do we do, need to do first? Yes, we need to head over to Jenny Zogzalot, who's going to do our worship warm up. So over to you, Jenny. Oh, hey guys, Jenny Zogzalot here, just down in Melbourne, Australia at dance rehearsal. Now, I've heard that you guys are doing the same song as last few weeks, Alive. So I thought we'd go through a few of my favorite bits of the actions, okay? So we're gonna point up, you are, you are, you are my freedom. And then we go, we lift you higher, lift you higher. Then we go four more times. One, two, three, four. And then you guys' favorite bit where we go, oh, 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 back to the front. You got it? Yes, you have, I know you have. Okay, we're gonna do our warm up now. So let's have everyone standing up. And since this song has so much reaching in the air, we're gonna do 10 punches to the ceiling, okay? If you're super tall, make sure that you don't accidentally punch the ceiling, all right? Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Amazing. Let's all worship together.
dancing to that worship song, didn't you, Hamilton? And I hope you enjoyed it at home as well. But we've come to the end of our VKids session today, but don't forget we've got all of our online curriculum available at vintagechurchla.com forward slash VKids, so check out the activities on there. But until next week, it's goodbye from me and Hamilton, and we'll see you very soon. Bye!